All right, a lot of fun in the break between games, but it is go time. The Class 4A championship is afoot. The Creighton Durham Hall Raiders, number one seed, number one ranked in 4A. The Apple Valley Eagles, the defending champions, come in seated second. They will play for the last championship we have to give out here on Championship Saturday on 45 TV. Chris Long, Leah B. Olson, Trent Tucker. Leah, tell us about those Creighton Durham Hall Raiders. Well, I think they have to rely on their length and athleticism in this game and really dominate inside. I think Daniel Oturo has been so spectacular in this tournament. He's had 48 points, 21 rebounds, 13 blocks. So if he can dominate, I think they're in good shape to win this thing. Apple Valley looking for their fourth title in six years. Trent, tell us about the Apple Valley Eagles. Do they have great leadership? Uh, it's a team that has been here before. They won't panic on the pressure moments. And they have a guy by the name of Trey Jones, perhaps the best high school point guard in the country. Heard a little bit about him. Heard a little bit about his brother. You may talk about Tyus Kirk, Timberwolf. What are the keys to the game? If the Raiders are going to win this championship tonight, Leah, what has to happen? Dominate the inside and dominate the boards. They knock those two things out. They get this one. Trent, how about Apple Valley? If they're going to repeat, what has to happen? Strong, sharp defense, and Trey Jones has to be at his best for the entire basketball game. Two terrific teams with two terrific players in Trey Jones and Daniel Oturo. This is going to be a fun one. We've got three great ones already. Dave Lee, Kevin Lynch, you got anything left for us? Uh, well, there, there's no. This, uh, yeah, we're all done. They we'll did everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, but there are side players in this game. You know, one of the neat things that we saw, and, uh, Willie Brazil brought up in the last game in the first half, he got production off of his bench. They got half of their points in the first half off the bench. There are other players yeah. that got to show up in a game like this. Yeah, it's typical. A lot of times, uh, whatever team wins this ball game, there's probably going to be kind of an unsung, unexpected source mm -hmm. of something that takes place in this game. You got the star power. We know that. These two teams played at the end of December, Dave, up in St. Cloud. I was actually up, the, up there to watch that game, and Creighton won by 11, and uh, they really dominated that night in the second half of that ball game. Now, the players of the game, Ryan Larson, the point guard for Creighton, has played terrifically all season, and uh, you see the double-double with points and assists. He's a terrific talent, and of course, we all know Trey Jones lit up the target center last year in this same game like it was the 4th of July, and if his team is going to win here tonight, he's got to play huge. Players to watch are brought to you by Mills House. Try it at the house. Let's meet these players. Let's go down to Dave Giles. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We welcome you to Target Center to the 106th Annual Minnesota State High School Boys Basketball Tournament and to Championship Saturday. This is the Class 4A State Championship game, and it features the Section 4 champion with a record of 29-2, the Raiders from Creighton Durham Hall High School, located in St. Paul. And the Section 3 champion with a record of 27 and 4, the Eagles from Apple Valley High School. Basketball fans, before we meet the starting lineups for the Class 4A State Championship game, we direct your attention to center court for a special ceremony honoring Dave Stead. Dave has served as the executive director of the Minnesota State High School League for more than three decades. He is the longest serving executive director in the 100 year history of the league. Dave's leadership, passion and commitment to education-based activities have created numerous initiatives and opportunities for student participants throughout the state. He has helped to present medals and trophies to thousands of students, but today we want to present Dave and his wife Kathy with a souvenir game ball honoring the Stead family as true champions of high school activity programs. The inscription on the ball reads, Dave Stead, Executive Director, a champion crowning champions for 32 years. Presenting the game ball are captains Ryan Larson from Creighton Durham Hall and Trey Jones from Apple Valley. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand and put your hands together to honor Dave Stead for his legacy of leadership and service. Dave Stead. And now let's meet the starting lineups for this state championship game. They will be introduced alternately, starting with Creighton Durham Hall. At forward, a six foot eight inch senior. Number one, Cy Chapman. At center for Apple Valley, a six foot eight inch senior. Number 41, Spencer Rolland. At forward for the Raiders, a six foot five inch senior. Number 21, Jacob Prince. 
At guard for the Eagles, a six foot four inch senior, number two, Nathan Mako. At center for Creighton Durham Hall, a six foot ten inch senior, number 25, Daniel Oturu. At guard for Apple Valley, a six foot three inch senior, number three, Trey Jones. At guard for the Raiders, a six foot five inch junior, number two, Jaden King. At guard for the Eagles, a six foot four inch senior, number 11, Luke Martins. At guard for Creighton Durham Hall, a six foot one inch senior, number five, Ryan Larson. And at guard for Apple Valley, a six foot four inch senior, number 22, Zach Corba. The Creighton Durham Hall assistant coaches are Mark Gauci and Tony Yazbek. The head coach of the Creighton Durham Hall Raiders is Jerry Klein Jr. The Apple Valley assistant coaches are Dave Edison and J.D. Jones. The head coach of the Apple Valley Eagles is Zach Goring. The officials for the Class 4A state championship game are Matt Daly of Golden Valley, John McLean of Elk River, and Tony Rodriguez of Invergrove Heights. Get ready for our starting lineups here tonight, and they are being brought to you by Education Minnesota, the voice for professional educators and students. Hey, dog. Hey, Dave. I was just looking at both team schedules this season. As you look at the lineups, how'd you like to be Dinah right now watching this game? They beat both of these squads this season. <laughs> I just had a, a Hornet remind me of that as I was walking in the hallway. How about Spencer Rollin out there, number 11? Uh, he's sitting out there waiting for the tip. We saw him this afternoon win a Triple-A award for his academics. Yeah, exactly right. Going to Harvard, playing football. And by the way, he's got a big responsibility on his hands, banging with the Turrell all night. And uh, he's got to do some good things if they're going to win this game. Trey Jones put back to Corba, and Corba's off the back of the iron. And they go off to Ryan Larson. He'll bring it up. Nice ceremony for Dave Stead. A job well done all these years, Dave. Just outstanding in the expansion of this Minnesota State High School League Hall. Things that are opportunities for young people now. And I can tell you one thing, going in through the years, that's all passion for him. I'm not sure that was ever a job. Ryan Larson, guarded by Trey Jones. Larson runs on a, just another level, doesn't yeah. he, with his energy? Yeah, he really does. He's one of the fastest and quickest players in the state of Minnesota. Keys to the game, Kevin. Well, Creighton Durham Hall, you know, perimeter scoring it to, to kind of get balance to their team. They're going to score inside. We know that. So get some perimeter scoring. Limit dri dribble penetration. Trey Jones is going to want to do that if you're Apple Valley. Balance scoring. They're not going to win this game unless they get other players stepping up besides Trey Jones and get some get physical inside. They, they, they can do that. They got the bodies and the, and the girth to uh, get that done. Keys brought to you by the Greater Twin Cities Honda Dealers, proud sponsors of Minnesota Youth Basketball. <laughs> Apple Valley will bring the ball up in the hands of Trey Jones. And a 1 3 1 zone here, Dave. Very effective when they played at the end of December when Creighton, uh, it was a close game the first half, and then after that, it was all Creighton. Jones in the middle. Can't find it. Rebound Rollins. No. Follow up by Martins. Yes. Remember last year in the state championship game, Luke Martins as a junior stepped up big time. He was a big reason why the Eagles took down Champlin Park, a really good Champlin Park team. Well, that's what we're talking about that. In the game before, we saw uh, three players pick it up a notch, three who were not the marquee guys to start with. Foul. Look at the top scorers in the state tournament here. Uh, we just got a chance to, to enjoy 
Cal Wishart, 27 a game, and Lukai Patterson for Brooklyn Center, Aturo and Suggs. It's kind of a who's who of basketball high school talent right there. Aturo. It was pretty cool to see Wishart because, you know, you've heard a lot about him. He's a candidate, but, you know, playing at Delano, it was nice to see this unseated team come up. I actually win oh, the yeah. state title, but a lot of fans got to see what he's made of, and he's a pretty good player. I'd imagine you, you take a poll of all the high school basketball fans in the state. Most of them would say, let's get some, some fresh blood in there with just some different teams and different players. I mean, it's fun to see these teams that get here every year, but mix it up a little bit. That's, that's healthy. Corba, the kick, corner, three, Martins. There's your guy. There's the guy you called yeah. out right there. Nice pass by Zach Corba, kind of getting into the teeth of that defense, and then, you know, Atura was hanging around, so he kicked it out for the open three. Ryan Larson, three from the other side for the Raiders. And Jaden King with a little birthday gift for his coach, Jerry Klein, Jr. Happy birthday, head coach of Creighton Darren Hall. There's a foul. Who's that going to be on though? Now they went down, kept Zach going. Corba, I think. This should be a foul occurred at the half line, but the continuation. Nice, nice little penetrating and kick by Larson. And there's uh, Jaden King, 6'5 junior, with the jump shot. Yeah, I mean, if Creighton starts to make a lot of threes with their inside game, it's going to be pretty tough for Apple Valley to come out on top here tonight. Stolen. Rollins with the steal. The lead pass to Trey Jones, and Trey will lay it up off the glass, softly touch it in there. How about the big guy getting the theft? The thievery. I'm digging it. Prince. King. Sound like I'm doing a lineup for the uh, Royal Family there. Or Caledonia, for that matter. <laughs> yeah. Prince. That is a turtle. Oh, nice. man, what a nice look over there for Cy Chapman. Well, yeah, I mean, you get the two big guys like that so long and athletic. They're playing together, looking for each other, which they do a lot, by the way. Uh, that's pretty tough. Jones quickly covered up. Martins. Trey, quick pass underneath. Nice. Boy, that was quick and fast. Down to Nathan Mako. Well, we keep, we keep talking, or I keep talking about this, Dave, against the uh, stationary's half-court zone defense. If you can get the ball at the free-throw line with a good playmaker like a Trey Jones, uh, good things are going to happen for Apple Valley. Underneath, Prince. Hanging in there. Well, we got here 18 points on the board, and we've got seven guys that have scored already. That's what you're going to need. Martins, good fake, good reverse oh, layup for Oturu. Luke Martins, active, cutting to the basket, shooting threes. I, he might be the one guy that really needs to step up and have a big game along with Jones. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if he can keep up this pace. I mean, the defense by Creighton is excellent. Oturu underneath, and a whistle and a fall probably before he got to the hoop there. Yeah, these two teams played uh, last year in the state tournament, Dave, in the quarterfinal game on Wednesday, and Trey Jones shot 18 free throws in that game. And I know Jerry Klein was talking about this before the game tonight. You know, they can't allow that to happen. If he just runs wild, Jones, and stirs up so much offense and gets to the free throw line like that, that's uh, going to be tough to overcome. Daniel Orturu, fun to watch, 19-point average. There he's you got, can see all his numbers, pretty impressive. Yeah, he's got a chance to, I think, be a really good Big Ten player at Minnesota next year. Time out. 11-10. This is Trey. And then let's take a look at the Mr. Chapman making this shot down low. Welcome back to Championship Saturday, where Apple Valley is so stacked with seniors. Not only are there starting five seniors, but the first four off the bench, seniors too. And not only that, 
There are 10 seniors in total, and that's simply unheard of. Zach Corva told me these seniors have traveled the U.S. together, spent countless hours on and off the court, and have really bonded into a true family. He says you just won't find a tighter group than us, and this brotherhood has really helped carry us back into this title game. And for Coach Goring, I asked him to describe his seniors in one word, and he said goofballs, just like you and Kevin, Dave. Hey, <laughs> underneath, look at that. That is Logan Wangerin. There's a kid who's a great football player. Put him and Rollin on the same line and get out of town. Yeah, <laughs> you're not, you know, both 6'8". Yeah. Both, I don't even know what they weigh. They're huge and big, strong dudes. And, yeah, they're uh, and they're not bad at basketball either. No, a nice job by Coach Clendenning down there with that Apple Valley program this year, too, by the way. There's Daniel Oturu. There's a foul down underneath. There we go on Martins. There's the birthday boy. George Klein. Played with uh, our buddy over there in St. Thomas, Johnny Tower. Yeah. Played at Creighton, Durham Hall, and a couple state championship teams back in the 90s. Well, that's the play you want. Just couldn't connect quickly. Down court, one on one, and he slides. That's a tough play. Your shoes just kind of slid on him, and Josh Arnold would call for traveling, but. I don't know what you do about that. Trey Jones does a terrific job of pushing the ball up the court with the pass. He'll dribble it when necessary, but if he's got a teammate open, it's like instinct to him. It's just get the ball down the court as quick as possible. Otoro right at the oh, No, I take it back. Chapman. Chapman. Chapman got it. And he is guarding Martins. What a drive Beautiful. to the hoop. Luke Martins is gotten off to an excellent start here and they're going to need him to continue to play like this now Cy Chapman basically the power forward for Creighton six foot eight you want to know if he's a division one type of player he's been guarding point guards Jacob Beniga for Wyzetta in the first round and now he's guarding Trey Jones here in this ball game and uh, he guarded uh, in fact uh, Drake Dobbs the point guard for Eden Prairie a lot in the semis too so Talk about versatility for a kid that size. That's impressive. Larson and Jones. Steele. Jones and Larson. One on one against each other. And the shot is up. Ryan Larson trying to draw the charge. And it'll be uh, two shots coming up for Trey. Watch this little pick from behind. And boy, two of the top point guards in the state and going at it right there and let me say this in that game back in December there was some John back and forth uh, like they didn't like each other too much so that might spice up this game uh, even more Trey Jones an 82 percent free throw shooter he's one of the best in the state tournament the best numbers I've seen are from Jaden King though Creighton Durham Hall he's an 88 percent Jones Makes it 18 to 12. Eagles of Apple Valley against the Raiders of Creighton Durham Hall. Oturu, ball knocked loose. Daniel hauls it down though. Comes back, back at it. Look at that. Look at that. Jones, he's on a mission. Oturu behind him gets pushed. What are they going to call? They call it travel. I, yeah, I didn't see that was blocked from the call, yeah, but it is a turnover. Watch this. You know what he did? He picked a turtle from behind. Started charging down the court and through his body. Watch this. I mean, he was, what he was doing, he's trying to draw a foul on Aturo, and it didn't work. That was actually a good call by the ref because Aturo is just kind of minding his own business, just trying to get down the court. Baseline runner Prince. Oh, what a shot to hang in the air and take the foul. He got that off. Jacob Prince has four in the game, he averages 10 a game. He's 6 5 2. Yeah, impressive size. I mean, they're like a college team. 6'10", 6'8", 6'5", 6'5". Prince hanging in the air. Nice play. And he got it. We got Kings out here. We got Princes out here. 18 to 15. Allie Hart will be with us down on the court here through the game. So we'll have more at halftime. Kevin Lynch, former Golden Gopher. Great. Mr. Basketball here. Uh, Trent Tucker, NBA champ. The only thing about I don't know about Trent is really a good tennis player too. Ah, he is. And then uh, Leah B. Olson, former Golden Gopher. That's a good shot on the outside. Hendrickson. By Eli Hendrickson. Eli's coming. 
Better hide your heart, girl. <laughs> Three dog night fans. That's a deep track for them. That went over my head, too. I don't know what that says, but about me. 21 15. Apple Valley with Lido Toru underneath. No call and a stop. Letting him play. 21 17. Jones. Rollins gives him a pick. That's a solid pick. Can't hit the shot. Eli. Corba caught in the air. Arnold saves it, but stepped out of bounds. Corba just got caught up in the air by the defense there. Let's go to Dunkville right here. Dunktown, USA. The mayor is Daniel Oturo. Here's a look back at last year's championship game. Brought to you by Old Dutch. Quality lives here. In last year's 4 a final, Apple Valley took on top right of the undefeated Champlain Park. And Eagles got an all-star performance from Trey Jones with 24 points, 18 boards, and 5 assists. And his teammate Mason Morris added another 12 as Apple Valley took down Champlain Park 60 to 54. And that's... People that watched that leg knew Trey Jones, but I don't think he was a known commodity last year. In fact, I know he wasn't. He came in the state and he just kind of wowed everybody. Oh, yeah, he was, and there was other performances on that team that were important. And remember, Champlin Park came into the state championship game undefeated, and Apple Valley takes him down. And they played earlier last season as well, too, Dave. And Champlin Park beat Apple Valley, so a little payback for the Eagles uh, for the big title. If they could win, it'd be the fourth one in six years. That's remarkable. Yeah. Arnold. Look at Chapman on Jones. 6'8 against 6'3. The kick out Arnold. Nothing there. Let's go back the other way. Guarded by Larson. Rollins back to Larson. Off the screen. Corba, who looked like he had hurt his shoulder in the game. Right at the end of the game the other night is just fine, I'm told. And there's there Trey Jones. He's just sitting there waiting and might as well shoot it. Kind of measured, waited, thought about it. Nice shot there by Trey. That's a part of his game that he's going to have to improve, but you know, that was a nice play. You know what's cool? On Monday here at Target Center before the Wolves game, we're going to have our very first class installed in the Minnesota State High School Basketball Hall of Fame. Hard to believe there isn't one. Yeah. And uh, I know a bunch of folks have worked hard on that. Number of years, four or five years to get it done, and it comes to fruition on Monday. We get to induct the first class, and uh, I'm looking forward to that. And it, Look, here's the first seven. There's more than this, but look at that. And uh, that's quite a group right there. Uh, and we'll, we're looking forward to seeing something. Kevin McHale, who's Kevin McHale? <laughs> Mark Oberding. Lindsay wow. Faith, the Johnson Patterson. Bob McDonald. Well, Lindsay out of Hutchinson, of course. That's a good class. That sure is. A little sure. mean. Yeah, and, and you know, and the choices in this state through the years are going to be tough. Uh, but and then the Edgerton boys 1960 state champs back when it was one class they're bringing up uh, quite a group to come up and uh, be part of that. That's all Monday just before the uh, Wolves game and then I think of the Wolves game uh, they'll be honored as well at the game itself. So glad the Timberwolves are involved with that. That's pretty cool. It's kind of overdue to have something like that yeah. with all the talent that's pumped out of the state not only just recently but through the decades. Well, I was surprised. I mean, the Grammy Little Girls, yeah. that goes back to 1929 to 39, uh, 94 straight wins. I think we might have <laughs> one of the members from that team show up. Oh, that's great. Janet Carvin in Montgomery, she's very deserving, too. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Storied career. They're going to have a representative, believe it or not, here. And I know they just lost one of their members last year, was it, at 102 years old. So anyway, exciting. They'll finally have it. You're right, Kevin. I thought there was one, and, but there hasn't been, surprisingly so. Trey Jones. High bounce. They're not going to go. Oturu was way up there. 24-20. A.V. with the lead. Freet and Darum Hall with the ball. Chapman out to a nice start. Trying to take advantage of that height he has. Good drive to the bucket. Strong board. Drew a foul. Boy, that's... You know, I'd like to see a replay of that because it looked like it appeared that he was behind the backboard. I mean, he couldn't even get off a clean look at the shot. He just kind of spun and uh, missed the first time, got his own rebound. And yeah, it's kind of hard to tell, I guess, from that angle. But and there was enough contact to warrant the whistle. And Cy Chapman is 
Boy, he's a big part of what Creighton does, especially inside. And defensively, he's terrific. Chapman one more time, 70% free throw shooter, 19 points. Cy Chapman. Got a number of seniors on the starting five right here. And he's had a nice run for the Raiders. Jones will bring the ball up. Apple Valley with the basketball, kind of taking their time up by three points. There's Jones. Fakes that short shot, goes against the tool, or tool who takes that block and knocks it out of bounds. The Eagles will get it right back. Yeah, there's a little John here. Now, I know Jones and Aturo are pretty good buddies. They've played together a lot, and uh, they're enjoying a moment right there. Yeah, I don't know. Together, I, they're friends. I think that was kind of a buddy thing right yep, there. Yeah, I, I'm on board with that. Now, in the second half, I would say I don't know if that would be a yeah, buddy thing, but right friends, now. Friends, maybe the first half, second half, all bets are off. How about that? Well, you brought it up now in basketball. There's that slippery spot again, the second one to slip over there. I have to get that fixed. Spencer Rollin in the middle. Yeah. He's got to step up and play well. <laughs> oh. Larson to the hoop. He's so fast. Martins. Is he going to push it to the hoop? He will run it and draw the foul. But that'll be back up there in the elbow. Close caption are not brought to you by Touchstone Energy. Together, we save. There's Luke Martins right there. He's Started off this ball game, big part of what Apple Valley's doing, and I think he needs to keep it up. It can't be a one-man show. I think Creighton's too good for Jones to have a huge night, and nobody else for Apple Valley step up. A guy like Luke Martin's Spencer Rowland needs to be a factor, and if that can happen, they got a good chance at this. Trey Jones inbound pass, looking for something to happen. Oh, yeah, that's a dangerous play there. Picked up by Martins, and now he's got past, past two men, and he'll lay it up and in. That was a heads-up play by Luke Martins after almost losing the ball and drawing a foul. Boy, the, the lane just opened up, and it, I think Martins kind of caught. Martins and Aturo caught each other's eye. And, I mean, just a nice play just to kind of fend off Aturo a little bit and get away from him so he can take that shot. That was a good play by Martins. Yet again, another good play by him. Well, he's the guy you said might have to step up. Yeah. Eight-point lead for the Eagles here. 7.50 to go. They used to be in the same section for a long time, Kevin. That's right. That's not too many years ago as well. Four or five years ago they were, I think. Oh, man, that's a good-looking three from Caden King, the 6'5 junior. Corba down low. Rollins against the two -room. Takes a bump, knock to the ground. No whistle. Now the scramble for the ball. And who's this ball on? This is, they're letting it play a little bit, aren't they? Well, Spencer Rowland just kind of pivoted, pivoted, picked up his dribble. Maturo just kind of held his ground, and then a tur uh, Rowland was just kind of out of options there and fell down. And uh, do a lot of that. That's going to be fast break the other way. King. You don't want to fall him. He's almost a 90%. He's the best shooter on the court right now when it comes to free throw percentage. You don't see high school kids shooting close to 90%. That's pretty rare. This kid uh, has got something special about him. Three-point game. Trey Jones averages 27 points a game, and this one he has seven. Martins and Jones. Chapman will come out, and Jones says, you leave me here, I'll pop it. Miss shot, Ryan Larson there to pick it up. Larson, the Bram Minnesota transfer. He traveled. Good call. Yeah, I mean, he, Larson was going so fast, he tried to stop on a dime, and then his foot slid. That's impressive. Yeah. Yeah, December. I still early in the season, trying to find their way, playing good teams typically in the schedule, and then... Hey, January 1st, things start to change and start to click. Jones underneath loses the ball. 
just fell right out of his hand. Oturu has it off to Prince. Jacob will set it up now. Man, they go 6'1, 6'5, 6'5, 6'8, 6'10 on that starting line. Apple Valley went 6'4, 6'3, 6'4, 6'4, 6'8. We got 6'8 coming off the bench for Apple Valley. So, you know, they, they have the, the bulk and height there, I think, Dave, to, to give uh, Creighton some problems at, at the very least. Oh, Corba. What effort. Nice play right off of the foot of Chapman. Timeout, three point game, 6'16, first half, state title for 4A. Fan cam brought to you by 45 TV. And joining us today from the Institute of Laughter, there, Dr. Chuck Ells is over in that creepy Durham Hall section. There he is. There he is. The floating heads have been brought out. There's the sunglasses. Apple Valley got the whites going. There. You know what Creighton, Darren Hall is doing with their band? So they, I think they went on spring break. So they lost some of the band members. So they asked parents who could play to come and play. And <laughs> my buddy is up there playing with his son in that Creighton Durham Hall band. Yeah, my serious? buddy Rob. Yeah, that's very cool. I've been scolded. It's not Durham Hall. It's Creighton Durham Hall. No, yeah, I've, I've known that for a long time. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to work on that. Our, our great producer, Dennis Silva, has been talking to me about that. Yeah. Travel on Apple Valley. The Raiders beat Eastridge in the section finals. A good team. And then, of course, prior to that loss that they had to uh, Eden Prairie on February 28th, they had, had 21 straight wins up to that point. This is a really great team. Look at Spencer Rowland and Aturo go at it. Well, that was a pass. And then the Showtime Raider brings it home downstairs, down on the... Uh, Cylinder and draws a foul at the same time. It was actually a little high low action, and the ball was just thrown up, hit the rim, and Turl, you know, that, that's a pretty impressive play for a big guy. Kicked off the rim, he just lit, leapt up there quickly and put it down. They'll take the two points and potential three point play if you can convert here. Yeah, it converted a kind of an accident there. Yeah. And he does. Tie ball game. They say he got stronger over the year. Oturu. Yeah, I, I, I thought he's pretty strong last year. D Dave, I think he's one of the better big men to come out of the state of Minnesota the last 10, 15 years. I'm not gonna say he's number one as Jones hits that nice little mid-range jumper, but he, he's one of them. He's he's athletic. He's about six nine, maybe six ten, somewhere in there. Quick feet, can run like a deer, can jump, and his skills are coming. Oh, a little glass. Chapman gets a three and takes a one-point lead for the Raiders. Bank is open on Saturday night. Who, who knew? Martins started off strong. Rollins in traffic, kicks it back out. Trey for three. Perfect. There we go. That was a nice shot. 34-32. I, li I like when he doesn't hesitate going up into his shot, and he's made a few early tonight, which is just going to help his confidence uh, even feel better. Missed rebound, Jones. Kick out, Martin's in the corner. That's too hard. Rebound, uh oh, this is a advantage for the Raiders, and Jones goes for the steal. He'll pick up the foul. And Oturu and Trey again. A little chat. I see a smile or two down there, but I think as the game goes on, it, you just the smiles will probably disappear. They've known each other for how long, Kevin? Oh yeah, years. Yeah, I playing mean, together. Yeah, they, they've played a ton together in the summertime. And I, so. I think Daniel tried to and didn't he try to talk Trey? Was not the word into coming to Minnesota? Yeah. Him? Oh, I think so. I, I think he uh, obviously he knew how good this this kid was and tried to talk him into being a gopher and staying home, but. I, I get it. You know, it's kind of hard to pass up a team that's got a chance to go to the Final Four of the year and win ACC championships and win national titles. And uh, I totally get it. <laughs> They're still chatting. Look at that. 34-33. Preeton Derham Hall trying to tie it up right here on the free throws by Jaden King. 
Horn, substitution. Amari Carter back in for Creighton and uh, going out as the guy just hit the free throws, Jaden King. Coach Klein trying to keep these guys fresh. 329 wins in Jerry's career. Trey Jones backs it up. That mid range Beautiful. jumper this time, Kevin, off the glass. Boy, I mean. He's just like his brother in the way that he doesn't always kind of display the athletic ability, but on a play like that, hard dribble or two going right, and he sprung up. Every once in a while, he'll just show this this leaping ability, and uh, but he doesn't display it a lot. But on that shot, he did. Both teams are shooting over 60 percent from the field. Look at that rebound, Jones, the no looker. That's out of bounds. That's off of the Raiders. Timeout. 350. Pretty good first half. 36 34, Apple Valley. Kevin, let's take a look at this here in this first half. Well, obviously, Jones has gotten off to a good start. Luke Martins, you know, had a big championship game last year, made some big plays in, in their win over Champa Park. Look at that nice little shovel pass by Corba out to Luke Martins. He sticks at three. And this happened about 10 minutes ago. Just They'll keep in possession of the basketball, diving straight down the middle of the lane and over Aturo and able to convert Luke Martins. Obviously, he doesn't get it, the type of attention his, his main teammate gets, but, well, he's important to, to their cause. Jones, Eli Hendrickson, a high pass. That's dangerous. Arnold struggling to hang on to it. That was really high. He did a good job athletically to keep his balance and keep the ball. Here comes Jones to bail him out of trouble. Martins will run the baseline and the reverse lay up. I love that shot. Oh, great play. Luke's got 15 in the first half. He averages 11 a game. And some of the, you know, sometimes, you know, when your teammate gets so much attention, people kind of are focused on Jones so much as the shot is missed, leading to a potential fast break here. Look at that acceleration. Woo! Whoa! Hanging in the air. No good. Rebound. Raiders, they'll slow it down a little bit. Prince to Larson. Back to Larson. He can pop it. He's yet to uh, score in this game. Oturu. Boy, I mean, if I'm Creighton and Apple Valley's going to play, man, I go to Oturu every time I can in the post. Martins trying to feed it. Tough decision. And now it's stolen back by Jones. He doesn't give up, does he? Yeah, the speed, the speed, and I mean the physical talents there. The three on the way. Rebound. Knocked loose by Wangram. Picked up then by Creighton will give it off to Larson. He'll bring it up. Jaden King hung on to it. Almost lost it there. Quick hands out here by both squads. 38-36. Coming up on two minutes. Ryan Larson's been kind of quiet in this game, Dave. I thought he might uh, come up to, with a quick start, but not up to this point. He hasn't. Well, he recognizes that that's a key that you just talked about, and another one for Big Daniel. Yep. Tie yep. the game. Every time. Get the ball down to him. I, good things will happen. Hendrickson. Inside. He's fouled. Look at Luke Martins, a little uh, little quick juke, reverse layup around the shot blocker, and now a Turo at the other end. This is this is what they want to do as much as possible. Get the ball down to the big guy inside, and if he gets a little bit of space, he'll flush it home easily. Spencer Rollin. Uh, somebody's got to go get it. <laughs> Hendrickson. Eli Hendrickson back to Rollin. Ball tipped up and stolen. Otoru has it. Use the dribble. Gets it right back over to King. And to Larson. Just kind of mishandled on that one. A rare mistake. Minute 28. Boy, these teams are giving us a nice start to the state 4A championship game. We had a pretty good round of games today. Yeah, we really have. And, you know, I was talking about how I saw these two teams play end of December up in St. Cloud. It was at the Granite City Classic. And uh, Apple Valley's playing a lot better tonight uh, than they did that night. Martins go, oh boy, that was close. Oturu got his hand on it. 
Larson, nice one-handed pass underneath, and the shot is going to go in. Charlie Dennis, two-point lead for Creighton. Darren Hall off the screen. That's going to be on Dennis. Well, look at the block, Kevin. See how close this was. A little cut by Martins. Thought he could beat the shot blocker to the basket. Uh, had the angle, but Aturu making up space really quick. And that, that's really going to help him at the Big Ten level. I think he's going to be an excellent shot blocker as well. Trey Jones tied up. Ball loose. Turnover. Here comes Oturu, and he is short. Rollins fighting for that basketball. Look at the effort down there. Now here comes Martin. A couple of passes back and forth. Arnold underneath. Nice. He's got to move. I think the Eden Prairie, uh, Apple Valley bench was screaming for a double dribble. I think Oturu double dribbled as he crossed midcourt, but it happened so quick that there was no whistle. Larson. Chapman. 15 seconds. Larson. Kicks it toward the bucket. On the run. Oturu trying to get across to him. Shot is up. Blocked. Chapman. He's blocked. Oturu stick taking out of his hands. Oh. Well, they're going to have to figure this out. That's a little more physicality than you want to see. Boy, a turtle got, I, I think a turtle got clobbered once or twice, and he just got frustrated that there's no whistle, and everybody knew that the clock was winding down, and he just, he kind of snapped for a second. That's what it looked like, because Jones, Dave, kind of stripped him under the basket, yep. but he already got hit a couple times. They got to figure this out because uh, you know, there could be technical foul somewhere in this melee. Let's watch this again. Lob goes up. Turtle gets possession. No place to go. Roland doing a good job playing just position defense. There's a, I mean, there's a major foul on Chapman there, and that's a, oh, actually that. that's Whoa, a foul. Boy, that's not good. There's a technical yeah, foul. Was yeah. called. I mean, Jones. Completely clobbered him on his arm. I mean, that's a foul that's going to come up here after the Chapman shot attempt, which there was a foul there. I mean, he just hammered him. Oh, boy. And then he got frustrated. That was not smart. I mean, wow. There was about three fouls on that, that play right there. And that's out of pure frustration. Yep. I told you there would be a point where they weren't uh, having a fun, happy talk, and we've seen this become far more tense. Yeah, and, and this is why I get some of these guys, some of these players are friends, but there's a lot on the line, and, and this is why you got to put the hammer down and you got to call these fouls, otherwise it gets out of control. So look and at there's Coach Klein. Yeah, there's Jerry Klein. Watch him now. I mean, he's beside himself that there's no foul. But you, you gotta you gotta call that initial foul on Chapman. And Creighton shoots a couple free throws, and this whole situation doesn't happen. But you gotta call that foul initially. I get the fact, let him play. That's a good thing. But something like that, you gotta you gotta blow the whistle on. We'll hash it out over in front of the scores table right now. There's Coach Gehring, and there's also Coach Klein. He won a fall prior to that. There's no question what happened afterwards. And Otoru threw Jones. And now he's cut on the shoulder. Trey is. That's a fairly nasty cut there. That. Well, they got a break in the action, though. They got to take care of this right now. He... He's trying to tell Trey that they're trying to tell him he's bleeding on the on the shoulder. And he didn't even know it. Yeah. But, but Dave, this is a good example. I, I, you know, in a championship game, as as the refs come out here, they're doing a great job of letting the kids play, but there's a balance to it. If you let it go a little bit too far, then players cross the line. Everybody understands the gravity and how big this game is, but you got to be a little bit careful at times, too, that when guys are getting hammered, the best way to calm it down is call the foul. 
Yeah, Jones. Is, he can't. He can't shoot the free throw now. Right. So they're going to have to send somebody else in. There's nobody even close to his numbers. So Apple Valley's called a 30-second timeout with a score 40-40. And does he have to go out now? Can he shoot the free throw? That's the big question. So if with a call of a timeout, then he can come back. It sounds like, uh, Kevin, I think, when they call the timeout, I think Jones might be able to come back and shoot the free throw. Well, we'll uh, double check that. Did, did, was there a foul? On, I guess I'm not even aware whether there's a foul on Jones on a Turo. Is a Turo going to shoot well, the, the free throws? No, the technical was on Oturu. Yeah, but I, I wasn't sure with everything that was going on, whether Oturu, there was a foul on Jones at the last play, or was it only the technical foul? It's only the technical okay, foul. Okay, okay. Yeah, so he'll go down. That was good. That was a good play. This is a major foul on, like, two Apple Valley players, and this is another foul on Jones, and then Oturu throws him down, and that's where the technical occurs. So, misses the free throw, much to the delight of the Raider fans who are right down in that area trail go boy they really got to control emotions Kevin yep that's exactly right 4140 Apple Valley boy they're gonna go to the locker room. this is gonna come out with just a toward temperatures in half number two yeah that's exactly right it's gonna be uh, coaches have to step up at halftime and you know kind of refocus everybody uh, during the break oh my and there was almost a fall at the end on 10. Eight ties, five lead changes. And so it's all sorted out. 41-40. A heck of a half to watch, and I can't even imagine the second half. <laughs> Eight ties, five lead changes in this first half. Let's head down to Allie on the sideline. All right, Coach, all melee aside, these two teams know each other well, and it's only to be expected that this game is this close. Yeah, both teams are playing real hard. Uh, we got to continue to get back on defense. Um, the emotion of the game, we got to stay composed, keep our composure, and just run our stuff. They're making us play really wide on offense. We got to get back to doing what we're doing. Defensively, what do you change up to contain Trey and Martins, who had a good first half? Yeah, Trey shot well. And percentages say he won't, but he has given credit. We're going to keep playing hard. Martins is a heck of a player. We just got to do a better job keeping him in front of us and contesting his shots. Appreciate it, Coach. Thank you. Thanks, Allie. Coach uh, Jerry Klein uh, Jr. there. And uh, he'll have uh, some things to say to his team. And you may hear him mention composure. And I'm sure that uh, Coach Goring will have the same thing on his talk. 41 to 40 here in this uh, first half of the state 4-A championship game. Yeah, and this is where Zach Gehring and Jerry Klein are going to earn their dough. You know, getting in there and calming everybody down initially. You can get so wrapped up in the emotion and the non-calls or the calls you are getting that you feel like you don't deserve and you lose the focus of what the main goal is here and and uh, they're going to go in there and calm everybody down, refocus their teams, and it's going to be a fabulous second half. Much more to come on halftime with Chris, Leah, Trent, right here on 45 TV. It's championship Saturday. Worried about what all went on there late, affecting the flow of things in the second half, Trent. Uh, it was kind of fun to watch. All right. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Alba Valley, Luke Martins, 15 points. We've said it. Trey Jones is a great player, but he is not the only great player on this team. Luke Martins showing a terrific aptitude shooting the ball, Trent, in the first half. But that's the reason why Alba Valley is so good, because they have a number of guys who can get it done on the offensive end. In the first half, they are doing a very good job of going to the offensive glass and getting some second and third chances. Trey Jones, however, you'll take him. He's pretty good. 15 points as well. Also, four rebounds. The steal and scoop there puts on his uh, outside game here as well. Leah, what is it about Trey that you like so much when you watch his game? His calmness, the way he runs this team so confidently with so much calmness, and he makes everybody better. Side Chapman helping greet and Darren Hall out, takes the feed inside and flushes it home. He also can get outside and shoot as well. A very good balance for him. Leah, uh, compared to Daniel Arturo, what he does down there. Yeah, and I, I was really excited about his play in the first half, and he has that nice, sweet corner shot. He is an athletic, finesse player, and if he steps up in the second half, he could be the difference in this game. Here is Arturo, such a force. The future gopher with the dunk there. Trent, he's so impressive when he has the ball in his hands. 
And Lossie does a very good job of holding his composure down although He waits for the space to clear out before he makes his move. This is a shooting clinic. The stats brought to you by U.S. Bank. The power of possible. The power of good shooting. These two teams were both over 60% about halfway through the first half. They're still both well over 50%. Leo, what else stands out for you there on the snap board? I really think it's not going to come down to the stats here. I think it's going to come down to the emotional play and who can hold it together the best in the second half. One-point game in the 4A championship. Apple Valley leading Creighton Durham Hall. More halftime coming up. Apple Valley are the defending 4A champs, but 25 years ago, Creighton Durham Hall was capping off a run of three straight championship game appearances. In 1993, they faced Anoka, Jarvis Archibald with the bucket there, and then we'll see Arvesta Kelly as Creighton Durham Hall knocked off Anoka 56-44. They won championships in 1991 and the one you're seeing right here in 1993. They have not won since. They're hoping to rectify that tonight, but Apple Valley certainly hoping to have something to say about that. Leading Creighton Durham Hall 41-44 here at halftime of the Class 4A championship game. Let's go down to Allie Earl. Coach, simply said, a lot happened in that first half. What were your thoughts? A lot happening. I think um, I think you got two great teams playing really competitive basketball. A lot of these kids, too, they know each other from AAU ball, and, you know, there's some back and forth going on out there, and it's really physical. I think both groups just really want to win, and uh, our competitive spirits are coming out in all of us. This game will probably remain close. How do you separate yourself offensively in the second? Well, we're going to have to take care of the basketball offensively. Defensively, we got to, you know, turn off Oturo and Chapman inside somehow. I don't know. University of Minnesota is getting a, a great player. Uh, it's going to be fun to watch him in the four years moving forward. Hopefully we can come out on top tonight. Thanks so much, Coach. Thank you. Chris? Two Mr. Basketball finalists playing against one of this game and clashing there in the final seconds of the first half. Daniel O'Tour for Creighton Durham Hall. He's headed to the University of Minnesota. Leah, we, we kind of talked about it too earlier, but in a bigger picture, what do you like over, about him and over the course of his high school career? Well, just that he's been so physically dominant his whole entire career. I mean, he's 6'10 now, but he's gotten bigger and stronger as he's gone, and his game has improved and continues to improve. It, he's impressive to watch. Trey, he's going to be pretty good for your alma mater, isn't he? He should be, I mean, because he's a very good passer as well. Trey Jones following his brother to Duke. He, of course, of Apple Valley, well, both of them actually. Trey Jones, uh, also a finalist for the Mr. Basketball Award. And Trent, we've talked about him so much. It's not fair to him to compare him to his brother, but the games are so similar. Uh, he's a do-it-all point guard. He's a guy that would do whatever it takes to give his team a chance to win. And when the game is on the line, there's no player bigger than him. Four of our five finalists appearing at Championship Saturday. The only one that didn't deal with South gave Kalsher won championships each of the last three Championship Saturdays. He, of course, also heading to the Gophers. Leah, what do you like about Gabe? Yeah, another finesse player. We've seen him over the years be big in games. Very, very impressive young man. Trent, you love this guy. Owen King from Caledonia. He's going to South Dakota State. Mr. Everything for Caledonia. He's one of my, he's one of my favorite players. He's a guy that's very tough, very good. He loves the big moment and I love that step back jump shot mr. basketball finalist and the state's football player of the year last fall as Caledonia won the eighth football title in the last 11 years and they made it all the way to championship Saturday in basketball finally Cal Wishart I think the most impressive player I've seen I didn't see him much this regular season loved watching him play he's heading to Georgia Southern Leo what kind of impression did he leave on you he, he's one of those players that you go, wow, he changed the game for the entire tournament. I mean, he was a big-time player, and that's why he's holding the trophy right now. Lit up the scoreboard, but also did so much else other than just scoring as he helped Delano claim their first state championship in the 3A championship game. You see all five, some good-looking fellas there, too, as well. Hang out in Madison Square Garden and Times Square and... On Trent's dime. Paint the, paint yeah. The, yeah, on I'm his dime. Forward. Paint the town. Here we go. Half number two. Who knows? One point difference. This is for the state championship. Creighton and Durham Hall trying to get one uh, that they haven't had in a while. And Apple Valley is more every other year they seem to win a state championship. Good double team by Luke Martin on the trail there. There's a guy that you know can add a lot. Yes. Yeah. And Larson misses on that layup. It was a good move. Trey Jones with a quick pass. And that is Corba coming in and getting it done. Well, he's been terrific, Corba. And Trey Jones, I mean, just threading the needle with that bounce pass. And Jones is just locked in right now. Oturo across to Prince. Back to Daniel. Chapman. 
King wanted that ball, gets it back down to Prince in the corner. In the middle, here comes Oturo going right to the hoop. Nice and a pass. good feed for Prince. It's the yeah. second time on that play that they brought him in on the other side. You know, when you're a, a guy like Oturo, I mean, and you catch the ball inside, I mean, your focus typically is try to, you know, do whatever you can to score. But he had the awareness enough. I, you know, I had two bodies on me, and my teammates wide open just dump it down. And Jones is shot. There we go. All over the orange part, and then finally dropping through the part he intended it for. Right there, Trey Jones, 18 in the game. Boy, his shot looks much better. Look at how locked in he is right now. And he's shooting much better tonight, and uh, his team's going to need all his points on the perimeter. Here's King. Stops to pop, and he got it. And is that a, a two pointer right there for Jaden? 12. Two point edge. Apple Valley with the ball. Corba. Going to penetrate a little bit, kick it back to Trey Jones. Try the right side into Rollins. He's got two people around him. And then he kicks it back out to Corba. In the corner, they got an open look. No shot. Dangerous pass. Really dangerous. He got a three on one. Prince off to Chetman. This is why they call him the Showtime Raiders right there. Well, it doesn't take him very long to convert turnovers or steals. Oh, man. That's Corba. That's how you put water on the last. Fire right there. Dialing it up from the corner yet again. Boy, he has been really good so far tonight, as well as Jones and Luke Martins, and they're going to need to continue to get that extra production from everybody. Chapman. Prince Otoru's been so effective down low, and Prince is just coming off of that and taking his pass. Out of bounds, back to the Raiders. Watch this little lob off the board from Prince to Chapman and uh, flushing it home for two. This will be a better look right there. The mouse hole camera. That's Chapman. a beauty. That's a great shot. That really is. Well, there's a lot of physicality going on right now on, in the post with Roland and Oturo. Roland strong. Oturo driving against him. Trying to hold his own. I'm not sure what you can do. And then Oturu is so strong and so tall that he just goes right in there. And then that's why he's going to be, as you said, Kevin, he sure looks like he's built for the big team. Right? Yeah, yeah. He, he's going to he's going to do well at Minnesota. And I think uh, Spencer's going to do well playing football at Harvard. You know, one thing he can do, Dave, uh, you know, he's he's stronger than Oturo. So what he should be doing when even before Oturo gets down to that low block, already be leaning on Aturo and just keep pushing him and don't let him post up close to the basket when you're strong enough to keep him away from the basket you know make sure he posts up 10 feet away from the basket not seven feet because those three extra feet can make a big difference as far as Aturo's production Logan Weigering comes in he's another big offensive lineman for Apple Valley's football team so he places Rollin and Daniel gets his 14 point one point game Apple Valley with the lead. This is how they went into the locker room after that flurry of activity, that kerfuffle into the basket. Mako, Jones, little fake. One more time over Oturo. Doesn't get it. And here comes Ryan Larson. He can push it. Chapman. Good transition defense by Apple Valley. Hustling back for three. Boy, they, everybody's shooting the lights out in the first half. It's feel the uh, and Chris talked about it. The percentages were just wonderful in the first half for both teams. Field Apple, goal percentage. Apple Valley made four threes. Now that's going to be key. And Jones needs to continue to take that shot and make that shot. Boy, he looks like a different shooter right now than he did the other night against Lakeville North. Four point lead. And that is good to see. Jerry Klein talked about it. You know, we're going to bet that Trey is not going to make a ton of outside shots because that's what the percentages say. That's a bucket and a foul. Jacob Prince. These were just one of the baseline waiting for that feed in the second half. We've seen that a lot. Watch Larson, one of the fastest players in high school basketball that I've seen. I mean, he's got some serious wheels, and that allows him to kind of break down defenses, just kind of accelerating and along the baseline, two points. Timeout, one point game for a title. Is what they're playing for tonight here at Target Center. Let's take a look at a shot chart here, Kevin Lynch. Well, he's taking a lot of shots, but he needs to if they're going to win this game. 21 points and 
I like the variety getting into the lane, a little mid-range action as well, and sticking some threes. That's the really good part. Uh, he's not a great outside shooter. I mean, the, the numbers show that. Jerry Klein, the coach from Creighton, talked about it. And uh, But tonight, it seems like he just shines at those big moments, and that's uh, great to see. That's when you uh, find out how good you are, and we've seen him don't do it before. There's a nice pass yeah. to Wangerin underneath, and uh, Logan's got a bucket. He's 6'8 kid, too. Yeah. Trey Jones spoon-feeding the big guys, and boy, what, what a luxury it is to have a point guard like that. You just get to the open spot, and he delivers. Now he's got the unenviable job of trying to guard Oturu. Prince has been very effective. That's a probably a charge. Yeah. charge yeah. Offensive ball. Good position down there by the defense to draw that. Take a look at this. Look at that. Luke Martins. A uh, little acting. Little acting. Good position though, exactly. Trey Jones, his team up by three, will take that ball and Wangren gives him that pick on the right side. It's he and Ortoru. And an, a cross court pass. Wangren underneath. Back Smart. out to Corba. Corba. He's going to run it in. Blocked by <laughs> Oturu. <laughs> I think Oturu could have blocked that with his uh, his elbow. Yeah, that's not that's not going to work against the big man. Corba is boy, how tough as he played, but uh, that's a play I think he'd like to have back. But they keep the ball. Jones inside. Look at the fade. Oh, it doesn't go. Like the shot. A ball out of bounds. And it's off Ryan Larson. That'll go right back to the Eagles of Apple Valley. Defending state champs. You know, it's fun to see McKinley Wright. He was on the championship last year, and we, you and I watched him play for Colorado State. Or yeah. Colorado. Colorado. Yeah, University yeah, Colorado. Colorado. And uh, he did. McKinley played pretty well, I thought. He really did, yeah. And, and Theo went to, was he Marquette? Theo went to Marquette, yeah, and I, I didn't really uh, keep track of Theo John much. I don't know if you looked him up, but I, I really didn't. But what a great young kid, and yeah, he's got a chance to be a good player in the Big East. Hey, I like both those kids. They were fun to chat with last year and put on a show for Champlain Park through the year. Minnesota basketball, boy, it's on now. It's, it's good. It is really good. It is. Every Ryan, year. That's a pickoff there by Ryan Larson. The former Bram Bomber lays it up and... For Larson, believe it or not, his first bucket of the night. Down in a hurry. Corba for three on the way and didn't get that one. Rebound Chapman. That and now Larson good. will push it. He's got a two on two. And that pass was picked off by Corba. Here comes Jones. It's a track meet stolen back by Jet Prince. Now he's got to stop and get rid of it. Boy, I mean, it seems like when when stuff happens and, and Jones comes out of nowhere, I mean, just the, you know, the speed that he gets in there and he starts to dig and scratch and get steals. Impressive. Wangerin doing a good job physically that time on Oturu and Chapman tries to push it up there. There's a charge. Guess who took it again? Martins. Well, Luke Martins and Zach Corba have been so good just making hustle plays and making the extra pass and uh, drilling open shots. And there's Martins right there. Had a big impact on that win last year in the state championship. And He's doing some good things again yet tonight. Corba. A little bit of traffic. And there's feeding it right up to Oturu. Outside shot is on the way, and it's perfect by Jaden King. That's his third triple of the game. And Creighton Darren Hall has taken a two-point lead. Jones trying to drive his foul. Jones got hit in the face, I think. I, I, didn't, I think it was right after the whistle, just the extracurricular activity. And Boy, he's, they're physical with Trey Jones out there today, aren't they? Hope he's okay. He's kind of trying to walk it off a little. I don't know if he got poked in the eye or what, but it looks like he's going to be okay. He's playing his butt off. Played his butt off, and he holds his composure, Kevin. I've seen him a lot. Yeah. He's, yeah. He takes a lot of stuff, and he seems to handle pretty well. Look at that oh, move. Oh. Right over the big guy. <laughs> How quick of a move and release on that layup was that? He knew Oturo was looming and just put it right over his hand. Off Tie the board. game. <laughs> Chapman. 
guarded by Corba. Driving to the basket camp, but the follow us. Nice effort by Chapman right there. He's got 14 in the game. 58 56 of Raiders. Jones. Body's going down. Look at that. What was that? Wangerin in the lane. Oh, they got up in time to get that shot. He's got six already in this Good half. Good job, big fella. Make some open shots. You know, your teammates get so much attention. Get to the open spot. You're going to have some good looks. I don't know where Logan's going next year, but he's a he's a really good football player. The runner, Wangerin, on the rebound. Jones. It's fun to watch when he decides to kick it up a gear, isn't it? Like that. Exactly. Can't get it. Tipped out. There's Wangerin again. They get pushed from behind. No call. Yeah. Oh, he took a shot as he was letting it go. And here come the Raiders, and there's a dunk by Jaden King. Yeah, I'd like to see that play again. I saw the same thing, and like he got just a little slight nudge, intentional nudge in the back, and that put his shot off. There's a foul on the two. That was on Trey Jones. Huh? You can watch a little bit of the action here. Look at this shot. Watch how quick. Just such a quick move to the basket and beat everybody there. And then there's King, Jaden King. Streaking down the floor, turning it over. Let's look at tonight's game summary brought to you by Catholic United Life Insurance Annuities and Retirement Products. Yeah, uh, Turo and Chapman along the front line, the two bigs for the Raiders. Uh, we kind of knew they'd play well. Jaden King has made some outside shots. That's key. Obviously, Trey Jones and what he's done has been spectacular. The numbers continue to climb. Now, Zach Corba, Luke Martins, you know, kind of unsung heroes in some ways, especially Corba doing some good things. Now, Corbett's numbers aren't huge, but hustle plays in the right position defensively, moving the basketball. Uh, he's played a big role in uh, Apple Valley getting to this point here tonight and a chance to potentially win another state title, defending their title. Look at the field goal percentage of these two teams. Eight out of 12 for Creighton Durham Hall in the second half. Apple Valley, seven of 14. High in the air. Wow. Jones, that's an automatic. Wow. Trey Jones, wow, just 25 points tonight. Yeah, when he wants to, he can rise up above everybody with a quick, quick jump. Chapman to the hoop. Good drive. No, re no reward for that. Look at Corba. Look at Corba. Digging and scratching. Jones. Stops for the three. Showtime on the other end this time. Oh, man. Are you kidding me? 62 60 look at the valley look at him look at him he's fired up man Larson following Jones crossover dribble between the legs pull up jump shot rising above the quick release yeah yeah, that was right after him making that That's deep three. Nice looked, Jimmy Butler. Yeah, Butler sitting right here, and they kind of looked at each other and started laughing. And, and, and Jones was running back and saying, he can't guard me. Just kind of saying it, not to anybody in particular. So there's some uh, high emotions. Jimmy Butler, they love him here. Look at Jimmy. Now, he plays for the Timberwolves, is that right? I don't know. I just they said he could sit next to us. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I told he heals up in a hurry, Kevin, uh, and I hope we get in the playoffs <laughs> because he'll be playing one. Yeah, oh, hopefully. He might even get in a little action at the end of the regular season. I guess the rehab's going pretty good, so hopefully he comes back. Uh, they need him big time. I know they lost tonight against Philadelphia. They, they're going to need their best all-around player in the lineup. Great crowd. 63-60. You're a high school kid. Does that give you a little extra incentive even when you don't get an NBA guy over there watching you? Absolutely, yeah. And your older brother plays with him. I mean, he knows he knows Butler a little bit. And then I think that's why Jimmy Butler came here to support Trey Jones. Ryan Larson and just off the mark. I tell you, that's not too far for him. We've seen him hit those shots consistently before. Yeah. Well, he's got that kind of range. Doesn't take a whole lot of shots. Uh, Trey Jones is really starting to feel it uh, with the stroke, and I think he's going to continue to shoot the ball. And he got a little, look at the, look, he got a little, look at the right eyes. He got a little shot there. Is that what he was holding? Remember, he went in the. Yeah, I, I think you know, five ten minutes ago, he got yeah. uh, he got dinged up in his face, and I think that's eye might be swelling up a little bit. Now he's got Chapman on him, and 
We'll see the defensive job he can do. Martin's under the hoop. Yeah. How does that happen? Luke Martin, 17 in the game. 65 60 Apple Valley back and forth Larson he is so fast <laughs> I, mean, I haven't seen it. all the games I saw Creighton play this year I have not seen some and I've seen some really point, good point guards going up against them they can't stay in front of them Larson's got that kind of acceleration Chapman's open and he likes that shot a little too hard How Prince is playing a heck of a game again oh, Corba. Good struggle for the basketball there. Possession arrow will go to Apple Valley. But Jacob Prince, Kevin, who doesn't get as much mention as some of the other guys in this team, but he is a steady, nice-looking player. He's 6'5", yeah. senior. Kind of a glue guy. You know, yeah. kind of keeps things together. Doesn't demand a lot. You don't have to run a whole lot of plays for him, but defends, moves the ball. I mean, he's kind of like a Zach, a Zach Korba or Luke Martin's uh, kind of the, the Raider version of those two guys. Charlie Dennis back in. Up on top. Trey inside carrying the ball and going to spin it with that left hand. Won't drop. Larson with the board. Now look at him push it. Look at him go trying to draw the fall on yeah, Jones. Exactly. Chapman. Look at Jerry Klein. I was kind of blocked. Did they call a charge on yeah. that? They sure did. Look at Jerry. Not a happy camper. Hopefully we'll get a re replay of this. Look at the ref. Pretty animated. I, that's, you know, that's a tough call. That's, that could go either way. Every charging call could almost go either way, Sam. It, 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 yeah, it's it's so hard to, to call that. The game is, you know, it's maybe easier when you watch on TV, but it's the game is so much faster when you're down next to the court here, and it's almost every time it's a difficult call to make. Chapman on Jones. Corba comes out. King will pick him up. There's a bad pass, and the ball is stolen. Here come the Raiders, down by three, trying to tie it up or get within one. Larson will set the offense, works from that right side, trying to get his guys where he wants them. 7.30 to go in this championship contest. To the hoop, Larson. He got it, and it's another charge. And Rollins. Look at Spencer. Spencer with a rare show of emotion. Well, there's Larson getting into the lane. I mean, that's easy. That's an easy call. I mean, Roland was just waiting for him. Look at that. Now, the crowd, the Cretan crowd doesn't like it, but uh, just come down here and check out the monitor. That's a great call right there. There's no question that's about it. That's a great shot from our yeah, crew. Our, shoot, our crew's making some great shots tonight. Right along with these two teams out here. Ah, uh, they're, you know, they're okay. I mean, come on. Boy, this game is fun to watch. 65-62. Apple Valley with the ball. Arnold. Here we go. Mako. Jones gets the pick. Chapman on him. Remember, Chapman's 6'8, so it's hard to get off that three. Good defense by Creighton there. They're, they're almost double teaming him coming off that screen, Dave. Arnold. Corner. Mako to Rollins. Nice pass. Beautiful pass. Spencer Rollins on a great pass from Nathan Mako. And here comes Creighton down in a hurry. Oh, oh. just kind of <laughs> dies on the rim. Jaden King, nice soft touch. Three point game. Got to get it in bounds. Here comes Corbo. That was a good play, I thought, by Charlie Dennis to come up and just maybe get a <coughs> quick steal. Well, uh, Spencer Rollins was. The, the play sign is touch your chin. Let's see what happens here. Oh, well, that was almost. That's Larson. Rollins won't pop that shot. Brings it back out to Corba. The ball Looking. to Jones. Arnold. Screen on Larson. And he loses the dribble. Right into the hands of Jaden King. Under six minutes, Dave. One possession game. Trey Jones looks a little tired right now. Larson. The drive to the basket. And this will be on Apple Valley. Jones is tired. I mean, he couldn't really stay in front. And Roland wasn't going to switch on to Larson. And Jones just kind of let him go. And, and uh, Ryan Larson's going to. Get to the free throw line. Ooh, I mean, that's, that's, that's another one that could have gone either way, probably. I mean, that's the nature of the charge right there. Yeah. Larson. 
Ryan Larson is a really good free throw shooter, right around 80% for the season. He's got four points tonight. He kind of makes it happen. Yeah. Timeout. 5:43. Two-point game. State title. For 4A on the line. Welcome, uh, welcome back here uh, to 45 TV on Championship Saturday. I was just looking at that final poll earlier today, uh, Kevin, and you've got the number one and three teams in it. Uh, Hopkins was number two. Creighton, Durham Hall, number one for most of the year. Then Apple Valley, number three. Lakeville North, they were here, number four. Eastridge was actually number five team. Yeah, and yeah they're young. Uh, they're, they got basically everybody coming back. They got some good young talent, I know. And then, of course, Rochester John Marshall with Matthew Hurt. He's a great talent. Unfortunately, they can't get past Lakeville North in their section, and the fans here at the state tournament haven't had a chance to enjoy his game. Josh Arnold with the basketball for the Eagles. And working around a little bit. Jones. Corba breaks to the hoop. Nothing there. Rollin comes out, and he's going to drop back. And then Trey in the middle lays it up under the basket too much. Gets his own rebound. He'll try it from the baseline. That won't go. Rebound stolen by. Jaden King back to Ryan Larson. Boy, what a fight this has been. Seriously. Yeah, really. This fight. has been a, a great game. There's uh, some bodies underneath. And that's a fall on Apple Valley. In the, the, the press conference after Delano uh, won this uh, 3A game, Dave, I, I went in there and was listening to the Delano coach and six of their players and somebody in the media asked everybody that was up there for Delano the coach and the six players have you ever in all the games you've played played in any environment like this tonight in that championship game and every kid said no nothing like this <laughs> and this is even more so yeah uh, boy, what a great two heavyweights just going at it great crowd out here tonight two target center Larson makes that quick move and underneath it Again to Prince. He just runs that baseline and takes those passes and just puts them up and in. He is an impressive, steady player yeah. on both ends. And once again, there's Ryan Larson making it happen off the dribble. And we are tied again at 67s right now as we come down to the four and a half minute mark. Trey Jones. Guarded by a six foot eight side Chapman. Backs it up the fadeaway. Beautiful. Oh. Wow. I mean, even a 6'8 guy can't get to that. I mean, it happens so quick. There's a little step back action from about 14 feet, and Chapman could not even contest that. Larson, the runner. Boy, he's starting to feel it, too. Tie game, 69. Jones with the left hand. Oh, man, what a play. He's going to get it back in the corner. Good help from Arnold. Off Arnold's foot, and now he'll get a fall trying to get it out of Toru's hands. Dave, John Wooden used to say that the most important physical skill in the sport of basketball, it's not strength or jumping ability or speed, it is quickness. If you can do things quickly, you really got something. 69, tie game. Day of basketball here. Russell Tyler Ruth and claiming the crown today against the Northwoods Grizzly team. That was a, just an awesome game. Man, that was fun to watch. The band couldn't make it because of the snowstorm, so the guys sang the fight song themselves. And then Minnehaha County Red Hawks in Caledonia put on a show for the crowd as Mr. Suggs getting her done. But Owen King was uh, great, too, and it was just a well-played, fun game. And Minnehaha ended up winning at the end, 73-60, but it was a closer game than that. And then uh, Delano Tigers and Columbia Heights. Somebody was going to get their first state championship, and the Tigers did it. And it was a massive showing of orange. Yeah. It looked like, a, a, you know, a, a convention of construction people. It was just bright orange or maybe hunters. I mean, it was yeah. unbelievable. And the fan support for every game has been fun. And that was impressive for Russia Tyler Ruthen because they've had that big snowstorm. And they had a huge crowd here. I assume they were all staying here because it's hard to drive. And there's Prince again. What does he do? Comes on the other side. Right. And Aturo with a nice pass. Just to recognize his but he's open. He's getting double teamed. And so he figures, okay, somebody's open. Where is he? Corba. What a pass to Arnold over to Rollins trying to get the O'Turo in the air. That's tough. That's a good block. Larson, the spin. 
Boy, the, the Delano, I mean, the Delano crowd, the orange, filled up a, a complete corner of uh, Target Center. They, they were great. Blocked off, he gets a shot off. That's good defense right there by Big Spence. Trey Jones, his team down by two. Out on that left side, free throw line extended. It's going to pop it. Yep. And oh. hit it. Uh, how many threes does he have? Six. Oh, is that all? <laughs> He's feeling it tonight. That, it, his, his game is going to blossom once he gets to college if he can make outside shots consistently. And tonight, boy, he has been just terrific. He looks pretty good. 72-71 Eagles. This is Ryan Larson. Under two and a half now. Larson. Corner. And that three is rebounded by Chapman and momentarily. And then a foul. And Martin's appealing. But he gets it. Watch, watch this. You know, two big bodies in front of you. Not so easy to see, even though you're six foot nine, six foot ten. And Oturo, you know. Blocking the shot, making the pass. Jones makes another jump shot. The bench is loving it. Jones is walking back. He's excited. He wants to win another title. Nothing mat nothing else matters right now except for winning this game, willing his team, and both these teams are just slugging it out. Tie game. Larson in the second half. Eight points. He didn't score in the first half. 11 points a game, 79% free throw shooter. He's not the best on the team. That'd be Jaden King at 88. Timeout. Eagles. 217 on the clock. It's a great night of hoops here on 45 TV. It's championship Saturday. The fans are leaving it all in the stands, Kevin. They're not. They're Especially those dudes with the sunglasses on and the floating heads. Yeah, it's a great history with both these programs. The players are bringing their A game, no question. The fans are bringing their A game. You agree with that? <laughs> a plus, maybe. They're bringing Absolutely. the A plus game. Trey Jones, I haven't mentioned, he's going to Duke next year. Uh, Luke Martins, he's going to play basketball at Winona State. Well, Winona State got some good kids. The, the best play, perhaps, it's hard to say, but among the best was that dunk we saw. Mitchell Flambon. Flambon. And he made a beautiful dunk in a losing cause eventually. Yeah, it was There's my buddy Rob. Look, at, he's, he's playing with his son in the band. They asked some parents to come out, and Rob was the only one that showed up, I think. But the old Winona, Winona Connor kid is there with his son, and... Yeah, you know, I don't know if his kid loves it, but I know dad loves it. That's kind of how that works. That's cool. CDH's biggest lead tonight has been only two points. Well, there we go. Strap yourselves in, folks. It's been an interesting game and a well-played game up to this point. It's going to get better, I get the feeling. Jones, guarded by Prince. That move to the basket. Is that going to go in? That's unbelievable. That is gorgeous. Left-handed. Are you kidding me? 35 points. Suspends it on the rim. Oh, what Eagles. a move. Eagles back by one. Pick at the top. Larson. Got those great jets. He's got those great afterburners. That ball goes out of bounds off the Apple Valley Eagles. Look at this thing. Just sizing up the defense. A lot of bodies in there with the left hand just kind of swooping in there. Look at it. Sat on the rim like it might roll in, roll out. Who knows? And it goes in. Maturo, he's had a really strong game. Larson, second half. Everybody's played well, Kevin. We, that's, that's proven in the shooting percentages. Right. This is a good state championship game. And we're down to the final minute and a half. Daniel's going to try to drive. There's that pass to Prince again. It's Jacob Prince moves in at exactly the right time. His teammates know he's doing it. And now they're back on top by a point. Jones. Prince guards him. Screen. Arnold. He's got an opening. Rollins. Nice. Nice. Beautiful pass there by Josh Arnold. Are you kidding me? One point lead. Apple Valley. We're under a minute. 
<laughs> Don't walk away from your TV. The crowd is up. Timeout. Raiders. 43.1 on the clock. The entire crowd is standing up. This is great. There's something special about high school basketball tournaments, Kevin, as a kid. You can't wait to see him when you're a little guy and you watch him and you wait for him, a little girl now. And, and uh, the last week we had the girls' basketball tournaments and some great games. And today has just been chock full of them. And these are things you remember, especially when you're a kid yeah. and you can't get and you're not old enough to play yet. You remember this stuff forever. Yeah, I, you know, I was lucky enough. My older brothers that played at Bloomington Jefferson when I was a kid and won a state championship when I was in seventh grade. And those memories are burned into my pea-sized brain. And I tell you what, you know, when that happened, when I got the witness and my father was one of the coaches, my brothers were playing and they win it all. And that was a big moment in my life. And that, that was a special time as a kid. Napa Valley fan getting it done. Arnold. Arnold, yeah, kind of hanging in the air. Didn't look like he wanted to shoot, but able to dump it off to, to Big Spence, as you like to call him, Dave. And he finishes over 6'8 and 6'10. Good job by the big fella. Apple Valley, great crowd with the football jerseys on. Coach Clem Denning, I'm sure, is proud to see those jerseys. He's a, he's a great football coach over at Apple Valley. The two great schools, two great programs, academics, I know, are high, both schools. That's right. Here we go. 43 seconds. Prince. Deep pass. Jones trying to go for it. Larson has it. Larson tries to get that foul on Jones. Yeah. Pretty clever. Yeah. Trey was good enough to get the foul. Larson underneath. Raiders by a point. Boy, that was a great drive by Larson. Able to finish in traffic, too. Wow. Jones. 24 seconds. Behind the back. The jump shot. That's off. Rebound. Eagles. Martins is back in there. Jones almost fall down to 15. He's going to go right to the hoop, lays it up. Otero, the follow by Martins. The follow by Torba is good. Six seconds. No timeout yet. Finally here a whistle. Torba, what a series Holy of rebounds. Smokes. Jones misses. Martins gets the offensive rebound he shoots it short Corba who's been in the right place at the right time this entire ball game has basically done nothing wrong <laughs> brings in the offensive rebound he tips it in what a play look at this block or two there's Martins and then Corba oh wow now they're looking they lost some time on that clock because there you go there's no timeout call no timeout call how much time are they going to put on them? Well, maybe put on a little bit. They'll look at. They're going to look at it right now yeah. while both these teams are in their huddles, discussing more important matters right now. Like, what are we going to do next when we get out there? Wow, they're looking at the clock and the time. That's what they're trying to figure out right now. Boy, this is interesting. Oturu, as we said, committed to the Gopher side. Chapman, I'd take a shot at him if I were a college coach. Got a lot of offers, I understand. He hasn't made a decision yet. Ryan Larson, he's going to play at the next level. He hasn't made a decision yet. Jake Prince, by the way, we've been talking a lot about Jake and how tough he is. He's going to play football at Southern Miss. Let's look at the time here, Dave. There's some confusion of what was taking place. They'll get this right because they can replay it. You know, you talk about Cy Chapman. He should go to Minnesota. I mean, he, I think he can play there. I mean, they need some some taller wing players he's about 6 8 athletic he can guard a lot of these point guards he's been terrific at yeah I mean I, to me he's got some Big Ten potential good block Martins and look at Corba right Huge. place at the right time yeah and look at the Valley bench oh they're looking at yeah Chapman was signaling for a timeout it was about eight seconds when he turned to the ref and gave them the the timeout signal, so I'm curious if it's going to be about eight seconds, but... Well, you can't blame There's so much noise in here, I'm yeah. sure that... So that's a good thing they can check that. <laughs> you know, it was cool here earlier tonight in the heat of the battle, the game before Delano and their game against Columbia Heights, and somebody started the skull chant, and the whole place was doing it. Both teams, both sides. That's a great chant. 
That was pretty cool in the, in the heat of the battle toward the end of the game. Still don't know really what it means, but <laughs> look at look at that nasty little gash that took place at the end of the first half. Five five, Kevin. I think is what they're going to do. Okay. I thought they might put a little bit more on, but so well, so what are they? What's Jerry Klein Jr. telling them? Well, they got to go the length of the court. So get the ball to Ryan Larson, and he's going to have to weave in and out of traffic, and and he's probably going to have Jones guarding him. So. Uh, you don't want to foul, but Ryan Larson's going to put on the afterburners here and get down quickly and see what kind of shot that they can get. But I would imagine he's going to get the ball. He's as quick as anybody on the court. Yeah, that's right. Jones will be on him. Watch this. And that's what they're looking for. Ball is loose. Chapman's going to have a shot. Larson feeds the throw. A dunk at the buzzer. Britton Durham Hall is going to win it. The Showtime Raiders finish it off with their trademark through the course of this season. But now they're calling him back. Well, they're going to go back to the replay, find out how much time they're going to put on the clock here. I mean, there was, well, let's just wait and see this review and see how much time. I would guess there's going to be a couple seconds on the clock, but as far as when the timeout signal was signaled towards the refs, that's going to be the decider right there. Their moniker this year has been Big Daniel with his dunks. What a way to finish off a season if, in fact, he just did. Uh, and, and what a, I mean, Chapman getting possession of the ball, shoveling it over to Larson, who accelerates. I mean, that was tipped. They were lucky just to get possession, get it to Larson, lob it up. Just the awareness to lob it up to Daniel Turo. Well, and there, uh, there might be over a second left. Let's look at this. 1.7 down. Time when, when is the timeout signal made? Right away. So that's Trey Jones signaling. So there's going to be some time left. Let's see when Jones, who's... How quickly he turns. One. One, yeah, about one second. Oh, what do you do with one second? Uh, uh, you got to lob it down. I mean, you're going to have the ball on the sideline or the baseline. Po point five. Point five. That's a little surprising. Yeah. Well, with this, you got to lob up to the basket. Drop it in. Do you put a Toru on your inbound pass? I, th I think what you do is you put Chapman on the inbound passer and you put a Turo under the basket. That was that was a phenomenal play. Ryan Larson having a presence of mind just to toss it up there for his buddy for the dunk. Yeah, it, it really is. I mean that's that's such a good point because oh they are going to put a Turo on the basketball. I'm a little surprised they're not putting Chapman or somebody just right around the basket if you throw it down and somebody could tip it in and there's a timeout. What are the chances that you do the old pick play on that inbound pass. Yes I was just going to say that where you run a the basket was made so the inbound passer for Apple Valley can move. Mm -hmm. You get the, the ball from the ref you run down the baseline out of bounds. You can do that and one of the Apple Valley players will come up and 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 have a charge taken by Arturo who's following the basketball. I've seen that before. Yeah, run. I wouldn't be surprised if Zach Goering is setting up uh, is. setting up that play. Boy, Corbett just missed that ball on the inbound too. Yeah, you see Jones. It's hard to tell. We don't have a, the clock on this shot right there but Jones quickly turns to the ref calls timeout but all right watch number two watch number two here for Apple Valley he's going to slide down and try to take a charge on a Turo watch this that's don't run, over. don't run him over he says and there's Jones length of the court Creighton Durham Hall state champions
senior laden teams putting on a show. And what a game it was. And the way it ended is how Creighton played all year long. Let's watch these two guys playing their last high school basketball game. Out of the way. A game that got quite physical at times. There's uh, there's the guy that really made the play of the day right there. Let's look at our play of the game brought to you by Minnesota Rusco since 1955. Well, they were looking to run that little uh, or a turtle to slide down and maybe take a charge on somebody, knock them over. And uh, I don't think had that shot gone in by Jones, that would have gone off. I think he, he still had it in his hands. I mean, it's only half a second to go. And uh, Trey Jones, uh, he's just giving his older brother, J.D., a, a major hug. And tears. All right, let's get the awards ceremony underway as we go down court and check in with Dave Giles. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we'll present the 10-member Wells Fargo All-Tournament team. Chosen by the sports writers and sportscasters covering the tournament. These students have distinguished themselves by their athletic excellence, leadership, team commitment, and exceptional sportsmanship. Presenting the trophies for the Wells Fargo Oil Tournament team at center court is A.J. Osterman, Vice President, Business Acquisition Manager from Wells Fargo. He is assisted by Eric Martins, Executive Director of the Minnesota State High School League. And now the 2018 Class 4A Boys Basketball All Tournament team. From Osseo, guard Zach Tyson. From Eden Prairie, forward Connor Christensen. From Lakeville North, guard Tyler Wall. From Lakeville North, guard Tommy Jensen. From Apple Valley, guard Trey Jones. From Apple Valley, guard Luke Martins. From Apple Valley, guard Zach Corba. From Creighton, Durham Hall, forward Jacob Prince. From Creighton Durham Hall, guard Ryan Larson. And from Creighton Durham Hall, forward Cy Chapman. Please join Wells Fargo and the Minnesota State High School League in congratulating these outstanding student athletes. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2018 Class 4A Boys Basketball All Tournament team. The Class 4A Consolation Championship game was played on Friday with Osseo defeating Forest Lake by a score of 64 to 61. The Class 4A Consolation Championship trophy was awarded to Osseo High School. The Class 4A third place game was played earlier today with Lakeville North defeating Eden Prairie by a score of 63 to 52. The Class 4A fourth place trophy was awarded to Eden Prairie High School. Bronze medals in the Class 4A third place trophy were awarded to Lakeville North High School. Congratulations to all of our Class 4A teams for an outstanding state tournament. The award ceremony will be conducted by representatives of the Minnesota State High School League Board of Directors. They are Craig Anderson of Pine Island, Brian Hickseth of Centennial, Circle Pines, Wade Johnson of Rothsay, Paul McDonald of Ely, Dave Swanberg of Lesur Henderson. He is the president of the Board of Directors, and they will be assisted by Eric Martins, Executive Director, and Bob Madison, Tournament Director. Silver medals in the Class 4, a second place trophy will be awarded to Apple Valley High School. The silver medals will now be presented to each member of the team and to the coaches. Please step forward to receive your medal as your name is announced. Number one, Josh Arnold. Number two, Nathan Mako. Number three, Trey Jones. Number four, Ethan Thomas. Number five, Michael Thomas. 
Number 10, Cortez Brown. Number 11, Luke Martins. Number 15, Eli Hendrickson. Number 22, Zach Korba. Number 23, Mark Passas. Number 24, Michael Christensen. Number 32, Mustafa Abdi. Number 33, Bilal Kone. Number 34, Max Sanders. Number 35, Jonathan Connors. Number 41, Spencer Rolland. Number 42, Logan Wangeren. Student manager, Braxton O'Connor Bell. Assistant coach, Dave Edison. Assistant coach, J.D. Jones. The head coach of the Apple Valley Eagles, Zach Goring. Now will the captains of the Apple Valley team please come forward to receive the Class 4A second place trophy. Congratulations to Apple Valley High School, second place, Class 4A boys basketball for 2018. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2018 Minnesota State High School Class 4A boys basketball champion is Creighton Durham Hall High School. Each member of the official squad receives a gold medal. Please step forward to receive your medal as your name is announced. Number one, Cy Chapman. Number two, Jaden King. Number three, Charlie Dennis. Number four, Lucas Ammons. Number five, Ryan Larson. Number 10, Jalen Newton. Number 11, Caleb Davis. Number 12, Zion Guerra. Number 13, Ben Gallagher. Number 14, Amari Carter. Number 15, Ina Griffin. Number 20, Quinton Fitzgerald. Number 21, Jacob Prince. Number 22, Peter Udoibach. Number 23, Josiah Remus Ford. Number 24, Tristan Lee. Number 25, Daniel Oturu. Number 30, Danny McGraw. Student manager, Jamond Jackson. Student manager, Miracle Carter. Assistant coach, Mark Gauchi. Assistant coach, Tony Yazbek. The head coach of the Creighton Durham Hall Raiders, Jerry Klein Jr. And now, will the captains of the Creighton Durham Hall team, the 2018 Minnesota State High School Class 4A Championship Boys Basketball Team, please come forward to receive your championship trophy. Congratulations to Creighton Durham Hall High School State Champions Class 4A Boys Basketball for 2018.
Congratulations, teams. Please join the Minnesota State High School League and Wells Fargo in congratulating these athletes and their schools for their outstanding participation in this year's State Boys Basketball Tournament. The award ceremony is now concluded. 25 years ago, Creighton Durham Hall won a state championship, and tonight they have done it again in one of the most thrilling state championship games we've seen in a while. I, I lost track. I think it was nine lead changes in the last two and a half minutes. We said before the game, the only thing we hadn't had was a buzzer beater. We missed by two seconds. That Daniel Oturo's game-winning alley-oop came with two seconds left. Creighton Durham Hall wins their third state championship, 79-78. I'm Chris Long, rejoined by Leah B. Olson and Trent Tucker. I'm, I'm struggling. I'm paid to have the words, but I'm struggling, Leah. I know it. Well, they gave us everything we wanted in this game, and let's just start with Trey Jones and what he did in this game and how miraculously he played. He did everything possible to get that win, and it just wasn't quite enough. I mean, he's a warrior. 35 points. He was 4-4 four four on three-pointers in the second half. Trent, what do you think about the everything we just saw? Well, we saw a lot. We saw star power. We saw guys who are not big-name players all of a sudden make plays coming down the stretch. And when you have teams who get to this moment, they have other guys who can step up and make plays. And, and we saw some good basketball tonight from start to finish. Daniel Oturo will get the headlines. Jaden King scored 19. He led Creighton Durham Hall. He shot 6 for 10. I mean, both of these teams hovering on 60% field goal percentage. Just a fantastically played basketball game, Leah. Yeah, well coached by both coaches. And I liked how, you know, we saw all the emotion in the first half, but in the second half, you didn't really see that. You just saw players playing really well, and that was impressive that they came together like that. Creighton Durham Hall are the state champions. Let's hear from them with Ali Earl. Coach, 14 years as head coach, you get your first title win, and in this fashion, I can't believe it. Yeah, what a game. Kudos, Apple Valley. What an outstanding performance by Trey and their team, and Zach does an outstanding job. I'm just proud of our team. Uh, we found a way to get it done. We played on unselfish basketball all year. And you know what? Somewhere down the road, Coach Rise is looking down on us. This one's for you, Coach. Talk about the grit of this team. Hey, we never quit. We keep grinding away. We keep competing. And it took us to the last play of the game to get it done. And I'm so happy for our community, for our fans, and for our kids. That last play came from a dunk from this guy here to my left. Daniel, talk about that senior. He's grown so much over four years. His game has just matured as a person and as a player. I'm just so proud to be his coach. And he's off to bigger and better things at the U. And uh, I'm looking so forward to watching him for the next four years. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you. Daniel, that was the most incredible game-winning dunk. Take us through that exact play. Um, I mean, uh, it was a great game. Uh, they scored on the other end, and um, we had like five seconds left. We wanted to get something quick, so we knew we had to go to our point guard all year like we have been. And he just broke through that little defense they had and just threw it up, and I had to just finish. Daniel, this game was so crazy from start to finish. Talk about the intensity down the stretch in the final minutes. You know, take a, it was a really intense. Um, you know, I just got to give all glory to God. You know, I got to thank God for this opportunity again and just to uh, be able to win this for not only for us but for our community. And for the people of CDH, it's just amazing. How much fun did you have playing in this one? You know, I had a lot of fun. I, I mean, I sat a little bit because I had fouls, but in the end, we came through, and that's all that matters. Congratulations. What an impressive performance. Thank you. Thank you. Dave and Kevin. All right, uh, Ali, thank you very much. Boy, he is something special. You know, it's interesting, too, Kevin. That you, we had talked yesterday about Ryan Larson kind of making things happen, and on that last play, who does who does get it done? But Ryan Larson, the quick point guard. Yeah, you can take a look at him right there. And Boy, just the, the awareness of the point guard right there to lob it up. I mean, literally with seconds to go, it was already a broken play at yeah. that point. Chapman gets it to Larson. Larson takes a, one dribble and lobs it up. Uh, you can tell there's some chemistry with those big guys. But, oh. yeah, what an incredible play. What an incredible game. This has got to go down as, as one of the top uh, big school championship games. We've seen some great ones, obviously, with McCurra against Hopkins. We saw the, the great game, Buffalo beating Armstrong and then there's some good ones uh, Osseo and North early 2000s and this ranks right up there with those top games that I've ever witnessed. Yeah I agree with you. We want to check out our play of the game. I wonder what that's going to be. It's brought to you by Minnesota Rusco since 1955. Here it is. 
That's Larson to Otoru. That's the game winner. Just before the buzzer, thought the game was over. So much noise in here, but a timeout had been called. And in one last effort after that, but it was tough. And Otoru finishes the season kind of the way he started this year. And they call him the Showtime Raiders. It's part of that dunking ability that whole team has. And, of course, he's the lead guy on that. And, you know, we can sit here and compliment on the dunks and the blocks and kind of the flashiness of this team, this Cretan team. But... You know, they do a lot of the dirty work, too. They play hard. They play gritty. And, you know, I think even a talented team has got to do those type of things to win something like this. They were tested along the way. I, I thought when I saw Creighton early this season that they were the best team. I know they were motivated considering what happened at the end of last season. So, Daniel Oturo left off the all-tournament team. I disagree with that. But uh, he's got a bright future and other things to look forward to. Uh, you know, moving forward in his life, and he's got a chance to be a special player in college. That's our player of the game, brought to you by Preferred One. Achieve your best health with Preferred One Health Plans. So, well, what a day it was with these final four games, uh, Kevin. Really exciting, really fun. I mean, it started with that RTR game. The band goes home last night. They get the 8 to 12 <laughs> inches of snow. They can't make it back. So right. the kids sing their school song before and after in honor of their band. I thought that was really cool. And the community support that came out for this whole day. The, every game was played quite well. That sea of orange we saw from Delano was remarkable. But on and on it went. What a fun day of games. What a great way to finish it off. Minnehaha Academy winning another state title. They're loaded. They're going to be great the next couple of years. They got a ton of talent. Yeah, to see Calvin Wishart come out here and, and dazzle everybody yeah. with his skills in front of the fans. First state championship for Delano. And like you said, RTR coming back. They get off to a big lead early this afternoon. Then they get down double figures, come charging back to win that single A game. And of course, Creighton is a team that uh, set a goal to win this state championship uh, after they took a hard loss to Apple Valley in the quarterfinals a year ago. And uh, they were talking before this season started, Dave, that uh, their goal is to take the title. And here they are celebrating a state championship, another state championship for Creighton, Darren Hall. On, on Coach uh, Jerry Klein Jr.'s birthday. That's a present if I've ever seen one. What a game, what a day. We got much more to come, though. We're not done yet. There's much more to happen here in the postgame show with uh, Chris. Trent, Leah V, and Allie will have more interviews as well. Championship Saturday. Our post game continues right here on 45 TV. There's still a buzz in the building. What a basketball game. Creighton Durham Hall survives beating Apple Valley 79-78. Creighton Durham Hall claiming the third State Boys Basketball Championship in their school history. Chris Long back with Leah B. Olson and Trent Tucker. At Leah, well, we could probably sit here all night and talk about this game but let's let's wrap things up here just a, a fantastic performance by Creighton Durham Hall yeah it really was and I, I like that you just said to Ryan Larson as he walked past <laughs> us that everyone else is going to remember the big dunk I'm going to remember your pass because that pass at the end was a dangerous pass but it ends up being you know the greatest pass ever so but what a great performance I'm going to assume that was the play call I don't think they improvised that so kids Trust your coaches. Every now and then they're going to get it right. Trent, uh, just summarize this one as best you can. Wow. Yeah. It was, uh, it was a fantastic game. I mean, so many big plays made in the last three or four minutes. And when you have two of the best teams fighting for a state championship, this is the type of play that you will see. Daniel Arturo climbing the ladder. He's going to cut down. I thought he was going to finish it off. Usually they leave that for the coach, but I think he's being told, go ahead and take it down. Oh, there's two strands left, so let's see, maybe one remaining. And you'll see him wearing the maroon and gold down the street for the University of Minnesota next year, part of a terrific <laughs> freshman class. Gabe Kalsher, we saw him here at the state tournament. He'll be there as well, playing for, uh, he of course played for De La Salle. Here we go, Coach Klein's gonna take his cut. Happy birthday, Coach. Oh, it is? I hadn't heard that. Is it? Yeah, yeah, I think it is his birthday, sing, yeah. Singing happy birthday to someone. Oh, I didn't know that was the yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> and that is off. The trophy has been claimed. Creek and Durham Hall are the champions. Boys basketball for the season. I saw a lot of basketball games this season. I can't think of a better one. Saw some overtime games, saw some amazing individual performances, but I'm, I'm still, I'm trying to count here. I think from the 3.30 mark, the team swapped there was one set of free throws, but it was a basket by Apple Valley, two free throws by Creighton Durham Hall, a basket by Apple Valley, a basket by Creighton Durham Hall. They went back and forth. The lead changed nine times uninterrupted. It was like ping pong back and forth. We lead by a point. We lead by a point. We lead by a point. 
I, I, it's just the way that the last three minutes went and then to have it ended with an alley-oop is, is incredible. It, it, and I appreciate the fact that we had these great athletes on the court tonight to have this great game. I mean, this state has some ridiculously great athletes and they played very competitive basketball. We saw the emotion and then at the end we saw the hug with Oturu and Trey Jones and it showed they were all done. So I, I appreciated that. 30 seconds left. Ryan Larson hits the runner to put Creighton Durham Hall up 77 76. Apple Valley gets the ball back. Trey Jones, 35 points in the game, can't get that to fall. Luke Martins can't get the rebound. Zach Corbett puts the third try down with five seconds left. Apple Valley up 78 77. Creighton Durham Hall inbounds the ball. Ryan Larson, the alley oop to Daniel Oturu. It goes officially with two seconds left on the clock. That's the first game-winning alley-oop I think I've seen since Derek Wittenberg, Trent, and that was, what, 1982 for NC State? That, that was, was a long, and that long one, time ago. That one was an accident. You're right, that was a missed shot, right? <laughs> that was an air ball. That wasn't around. planned. <laughs> the stats are brought to you by U.S. Bank, the power of possible. Just parody and free throws, but the theme there, they both hit their free throws. Of those seven blocks, six came by the hands of Daniel Oturu. Leo, what do you think as we look at the statistics? I mean, just no, so to easy. To me, in this game, it was never about the stats. It really wasn't. It's about great players playing at a high level for their coaches in a big game. We're going to put the 2017-18 season to bed after this. What an amazing championship Saturday. We'll celebrate our champions after this. Here is how it went down. Russell Tyler Ruthen beat Northwoods 59-55. Couple big runs to win the Class A title. Jalen Suggs, one of the best sophomores in the country, scored 23 points, leading Minnehaha Academy to their third title. Look at Keegan O'Neal, 30 points, 22 in the second half as Delano beat Columbia Heights 65-61. Delano's first ever state title. And you just saw Creighton Durham Hall winning the 4A title for the first time since 1993. And how about this picture, Trent and Leah? Minnehaha Academy took the trophy back. That's their school being rebuilt after the fatal explosion happened before the school year. Just a fantastic photograph here. And they said they were dedicating their season to the, uh, the two employees from the school that died in the explosion. And that is uh, a lump in my throat as we see that. It's a pretty good tribute by the Red Hawks right there. I uh, do want to mention, we, we went and asked, uh, Daniel Latour from Creighton Durham Hall was not included on the all-tournament team. That was a committee decision on behalf of the State High School League. Want to make sure that everybody knows that. A lot of people asking. A championship Saturday to remember. Congratulations to Russell, Tyler, Ruth, and their third title. Minnehaha Academy, their third title. Delano, first-time champions. Creighton Durham Hall champions for the third time. The executive producer of our tournaments on 45 TV is Dennis Silva. The director is Pat O'Connor. Our studio producer is Brian Monaghan and the director of operations is Monica Doyle. Just an amazing crew behind all of us that bring you the pictures every single tournament here. Amazing work done by everybody. There are just too many to name, but all of you guys back there in the truck, thank you so much. And a thank you to those of you at home who tuned in to watch just a fantastic tournament. On behalf of Dave Lee, Kevin Lynch, Dave Olson, Trent Tucker, Ali Arl, I'm Chris Long. What a tournament this was. Congratulations to our four champions. Thanks for watching, everybody, right here on 45 TV.